good afternoon, and thank you all for being here. Um, my name is Robin Stevens, and I am the chair of the Washtenaw County Democratic Party Black Caucus. And as part of my um, format for this year, one of the things that we uh, are doing is what's called a community uncomfortable community conversations. And let me just say this before we get too far in. Um, you don't need to adjust anything. I am black. I have been black for many years, and I am unapologetically black, OK? I am African by heritage. I am American by birth. But I am black because that's the label this country has placed upon me, and I wear it proudly. It has a lot of labels, and it has a lot of connotations that come with it. I cannot walk in a room and just be Robin Stevens, the attorney, the chair of the Black Caucus. I am first and foremost a black woman. When you see me, whether you like it or not, that is what you think first. Who is this black woman? What the hell is she doing here? Who let her in? And I'm the type, you don't have to let me in. I'm going to bust the door and come on in, all right? So like I said, I am unapologetically black. I love being black. Black is a heritage that carries with it so much for me. And I think one of the reasons why the uncomfortable conversations are so uncomfortable for people is that we all bring to the table a different story about our heritage. My heritage is that my people were bought here not by choice. I am not American by choice. Well, I am if you talk to my parents, because they weren't going back to Africa because they didn't know nothing about that. So as my mother and father always say, girl, this is it. You living in Michigan, live with it. We're not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, why? It snows here. I hate it here. But my parents, are say they said, you know, we don't know anything about Africa. We've never been to Africa. But you have great grandparents that know all about Africa and the heritage of Africa. So since you have been born in the United States and I have been born in the United States, we are going to be African Americans, but unapologetically black, because we can't get past it. We cannot, as I stated, walk in a room and not be black. If you are Jewish or you are even some Hispanics, you can do what we call pass. Nobody knows you're Jewish until you tell them. Or no one knows you're Spanish until you tell them. Or no one knows you're a lesbian or that you are gay until you tell them. But I don't have a choice. I am black. First and foremost, before anything else, that's what I am. And as I stated, unapologetically so. So the uncomfortable conversation that we all should be having, particularly the way that things are right now in this country, has to do with each and every one of our heritage that makes up the story of the United States. Now, I know my heritage, and I know it well because my parents taught it to me. Both of my parents are from the South. They lived on plantations was, my mother says, big farms that made them work all day, every day, whether they liked it or not. So that is the heritage and the story and the history that my parents shared with me and that they brought to our kitchen table when we were having dinner. And I'm sure as a European American or white, whatever you call yourself, or as a Hispanic, your heritage and the story that your parents brought to your kitchen table is different than mine, but intertwined in ways that we are not proud of. If you are European American, you can say all day long, well, my parents never owned slaves. Maybe they didn't, but maybe their grandparents did or some other ancestor. And so that's why, in my humble opinion, it makes the conversation so hard to have because we each bring our own heritage and our own story to the table. The stories intertwine, but not always in a nice way. And it's hard to talk about the fact 
that my grandmother's grandmother, who passed for white because she was Irish and black and the daughter of a slave owner and passed for many, many years for white, that her story that was passed down to me is a story that is full of hate and confusion and an unspoken um, identity that she couldn't grasp, that she couldn't get a hold of. So my mother has six sisters, and this would be her grandmother, who if you saw her pictures, as I stated, she looks white. So my mother's grandmother, and I'm in my 60s, so my mother is old than me, which makes her old, <laughs> she knows that. But if you look at my great-grandmother's pictures on my wall that look very, very white, you can understand why my grandmother, her daughter, who my great-great-grandmother married a black man, looks more African and has more of a struggle with what is her real identity. Because she has a mother who is half white, half black, but a slave. So as they pass that down to us, generations later, and we're hearing all the stories of how our ancestors, specific to us, got to Michigan, it's not a story of love all white people. I'm sorry, it's not. It's a story of be cautious of all white people. Be cautious of people who aren't like you because they don't understand you. And this society that you live in has put a label on black or black Americans or African Americans of being lazy, of being welfare queens, of having children without fathers, of having fathers going to prison. But those stories do not look at the system of racism, which opens up a whole new door. So if we talk about systemic racism, which comes from the top, triples down to the bottom, and affects any person that is brown or black, the system of racism, first of all, there is no system. Systems are people. If you say the government, you're talking about people because our government is not an entity, it's made up of people. Those people then set the standards for what is considered okay and what is not considered okay. So we are all part of the system because we are all people who could end up working for our government, which is part of the systemic racism. And that is why it is so important to have uncomfortable community conversations. Uncomfortable, as I stated, because we're talking about issues that people are not comfortable with saying. When I use the word black, or I say to somebody, you know that white woman this, whoa, uh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that how we kind of identify each other when we're talking to people? When I, you know, went to the movies with a friend of mine the other day, and she said, all oh, these white people in here seeing this black movie. I was like, who said the movie was black just because black people are in it? She said, that's why it's black, because there's black people in it, girl. I said, no, sweetheart. It's a movie. You're putting a label on it. Let's not do that. Let's not put a label on this movie that it's a black movie. It was uh, a question of faith. And let's not put a label on it that it's a black movie because then it implies that white people can't get anything from it. But they can because the movie was about faith and having faith, whatever your God is or your faith is, everybody can relate to that. But that's what we do in this country is we have to have a label. And that comes from our history. And so the more we can talk